Cash is disappearing, and it's disappearing fast. All around the world, we are seeing more digital transactions and less cash. Just in the last 20 years, there has been a massive leap towards a cashless society. This is one which government absolutely favors in order to be able to track every transaction. Centralizing control is extremely important to their ultimate goals. Are you in favor of a cashless society? You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today, we're going to look at the cashless society and show you several examples around the world. We're going to talk about currencies today as well. A lot to cover and I wanted to begin with this very brief introduction. For those who aren't aware about what the cashless society is, we're just going to touch on it very quickly. What is a cashless society? A cashless society describes an economic state whereby financial transactions are not conducted with money in the form of physical banknotes or coins, but rather through the transfer of digital information between the transacting parties. Translation, buying and selling stuff without cash. That's what we're looking at today. Now, according to the mainstream views, these are the pros and cons of a cashless society. Pros, cash can be difficult to carry around, you can lose it, digital transactions don't need any paper or coin, just a tap of the card, it's easy and convenient, very large amounts of money can be transferred without it being cumbersome. Imagine you had to pay for something that costed a million dollars, like a home for example, to pay that with bills would be quite difficult. So you can do so with a digital transaction and makes it easier. I get that point. Cons. People without banks are left out. Infrastructure still needs to catch up. This is an issue that we'll discuss in a moment here. But all around the world, they are going towards it. The businesses are in favor generally. And you also have the governments in favor of it too. And individuals are taking it up and they're loving it for the most part. We see that. Now there's a different side to the argument that isn't really being looked at and it is so important. We'll get into that more in a moment, but let's start with this chart. Where cash is king in Europe, share of point of sale purchases using cash by households in selected European countries. At the top of the list, Greece, 88%. This is pretty high. I mean, Spain and Italy are basically right there. You can look at the very bottom of the list, Sweden at 15%, Denmark 23%, the UK is at 34%. So this data comes from something I'll show you in just a second. But I wanted to give you a moment just to look at this. For those who are interested, maybe you live in one of these countries, maybe not, I'd be interested to hear what you have to say. If you are from Sweden in particular, I have heard both sides. I've heard the cashless society as well as people saying, no, absolutely not. Cash is everywhere. It's in abundance here. And so I'm seeing two different sides to this. I'd like to know because I know that I have many subscribers from Sweden. So I'd be interested to hear what you have to say. So this is the report directly here from the website Access to Cash. I wanted to bring it to you just to show the details about the UK. Many are suggesting we are headed towards a cashless society. It's certainly true. We're using less cash. Over the last 10 years, cash payments have dropped from 63% of all payments to 34. Now that is big. In the last 10 years, if you think about it, 10 years ago, there really isn't much change if you think about it. However, people are deciding to go more and more cashless. That's the UK, but I'm sure this would apply to most other areas like the United States, Canada, Australia, and so on. For the most part, it's moving in that direction. The percentages obviously are different, but we can see the trend. This is a very, very long and detailed report. If you want to check out the PDF, the link will be in the description. It is extremely long, and if you are interested in the details, this is the one that you want to check out. This article is talking about the US. Americans are becoming less reliant on physical currency. Roughly 3 in 10 US adults, 29%, said that they make no purchases using cash during a typical week, up slightly from 24% in 2015. And the share who say that all or almost all of their weekly purchases are made using cash has modestly decreased from 24% to 18% today. This is the chart that's associated with that if you're interested in checking it out. What I find in general throughout the research has been more and more people are going towards digital, whether that is with a debit card, credit card, or even using different types of cell phones and other types of contactless methods of payment. 
Of course, the same thing happening in Canada. Canada pushing towards a cashless society with a 70% drop in cash transactions by 2030. Many of the establishments that you go into, they have an iPad and they have a scanner and that's it. There is no cash available. If you want to pay in cash, you'll have to go somewhere else because quite frankly, they do not accept it. Now you can go to the major establishments if you're going to go to a fast food restaurant or another type of restaurant or anything thing if you're going to go to the big box stores yes cash is accepted there but a lot of the little boutique shops are finding it cumbersome to deal with cash and so they are going ahead with this now that's a small number of them today but i've noticed particularly here in toronto where it's becoming more and more frequent the technology is relatively new so i do believe that in the next few years we'll see that picking up the pace According to Moneris, by 2030, cash purchases will make up only 10% of money spent in Canada. I totally agree with this. I do believe that enough people will be using it to make it widespread and mainstream. At the bottom, more Canadians, especially younger ones, are tapping their cards to pay as opposed to inserting them into payment terminals. We've seen the number of contactless transactions more than double this year, which is a strong indication that most mobile payments are going to see a huge lift. They're getting accustomed to doing so and this obviously is putting Canada closer and closer towards this cashless society. Of all the countries in the world to go completely cashless, Sweden could be the first. It's already considered to be the most cashless society in the world. More Swedes have access to a payment card than to cash, according to the data from their own central bank. And the overwhelming majority of the nation, 85%, have access to online banking. Now take a look at this. Just 2% of the value of transactions in Sweden consist of cash. And this is expected to decline to less than half a percent by 2020. Now we're getting different numbers obviously but I just wanted to show you this. Two percent? Well that's ultimately the goal. They want to minimize the amount. Now this is an issue for these establishments because if there's only two percent of the people paying with cash it's really not worth having the ability to hold on to it. You need to have change. At the end of the night you have to go and count it all up. It's really difficult obviously and then you have to worry about is it counterfeit money is there a problem with it what if it doesn't go through if somebody gives you a ripped one what do you do with all of that all the details of course if you're owning a shop I know that one of the most difficult things is collecting the money at the end of the night having to deposit it at the bank every time you're carrying a bunch of cash a lot of these business owners they don't want to be doing that if everything is digital there's less of a concern there I understand the security risk definitely but there are other sides to that as well. Out of Forbes, experts are warning that rising bank charges and disappearing branches will force businesses to ditch cash before customers are ready. And that's important because if an individual only has cash, suddenly all of these cards and establishments that only accept them are going to leave people out of the ability to purchase. And that's bad for the business of that store and it's also not very good for that individual. According to that report I had showed you earlier, going cashless too soon could mean millions of people are financially excluded and at risk of exploitation. I don't think it's going that way so fast that people aren't going to be able to keep up, but it is increasing at a rapid rate. You know, today there are so many people, particularly in the older generations, maybe they didn't get a bank ever and they didn't need one. They stuffed the money under their mattress. They buried it in their backyard. And now suddenly, if the places that they need to go to buy their groceries, for instance, don't accept cash, that's going to be a problem for them. They may not be able to deal with it. So this is really the issue at hand here. And I want to make it clear. The whole message for this video is quite simple and it looks like our currencies are being devalued on a global scale. This happens to be the US dollar versus the Argentine peso over the last five years. Five years ago, the Argentine peso was eight 
to the US dollar, all right? Eight of them gets you a US dollar. Today, it's over 40, over 40 from eight in five years. If I show you here over the last year, it's still quite extreme. It's 20 pesos and now over 40. So this has completely halved in value in one year, in a time when nobody has really been paying attention to what Argentina has been up to over the last year. We haven't really heard too much news in the mainstream at least, but the currency has been quickly evaporating in its value versus the US dollar, and that makes a big difference. Now, I have heard both sides of the story from people in Argentina. They have told me everything is just fine, you would never know that there's a crisis going on, and then I've had other people saying, actually, it's really bad. I'm not there in Argentina, I've read the articles, I'm looking at the charts, I can only see it from an outsider's perspective. If you're in Argentina, I would absolutely like to know what you are seeing there. The point of this is basically that the currency itself, no matter what you have, it's worthless and it's depreciating against real goods. We are measuring here, in this case, the US dollar versus the Argentine peso. If your idea of savings is putting your money under your mattress, you've made a big mistake. This is not a good idea. Now, the banking system isn't safe either. That's not what I'm saying. We need to hold our value, our savings, in real assets. That's the only way we're ever going to be able to manage this mess that they have created for us. This is going towards the cashless society, whether we like it or not. They're going to somehow force it upon us, and we need to be able to be one step ahead. Don't hold that cash. Don't hold the savings, as I said, under your mattress or in the bank account. Hold your savings in real assets. It is so critical. It's so important important. That's all for this video. If you found it informative, please give me a thumbs up. By giving me a like on this video, you are supporting me, you're supporting my work, and I do appreciate that. If you want the financial education you were not taught in school, these two books have everything that you need. You can get all the details from the foundation, the history, the asset classes, making money, so much more. Check them out at the link in the description. If you want the audiobook, you can get that at themoneygps.com. If you want to know what's happening in Venezuela right now, this is the video to watch. I cover the Café con Leche Index, showing you the most massive inflation that we have in the world today. Click on the video and I will see you there.